One of the major pain points my clients often struggle with after narcissistic abuse is how to know that they can trust themselves moving forward. And that's exactly what we're diving into today. How to trust yourself implicitly after narcissistic abuse. Let's get started. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm the founder of Tammy M. Coaching and the creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. So let's talk about how to develop self-trust so you can learn to trust yourself implicitly after narcissistic abuse. You know, if you Google the concept of self-trust, the results will tell you that this concept boils down to a feeling. And to be honest with you, I completely disagree. I believe that self-trust begins with a decision, a choice we can make, certainly one that will induce an emotional state, such as feelings of confidence, clarity, certainty, and even a deeper sense of groundedness within ourselves. But a choice and a decision is required first and foremost in order to be able to get to that feeling state. And that's the good news, friends. Self-trust is a decision away. It's about making the decision to back yourself, to decide that you are trustworthy, that you're worthy of your own trust, that you can and will trust yourself no matter what you've lived through to this point. It's a function of deciding that from here on in, you always make the right decision. And even if it turns out differently than you hoped, wanted, or expected, even when it looks in retrospect as if it was the wrong decision, either way, you'll learn, you'll grow, and therefore, you benefit, you profit. So from that perspective, it's always the right decision, right? In my view, the ability to trust oneself is about making the decision that no matter how many so-called wrong turns and missteps I may have made in the past, it gets to be a new day. It's about deciding that I will have my own back and I will act in my own best interest, no matter what. And most importantly, it's about deciding that I will never, ever abandon myself again, ever. You can make a decision today that says, I can trust myself to not only have my own back, but also to be gentle, kind, and loving with myself, to support myself and honor myself, no matter the outcome of any decision I make. Again, I will either learn or I will grow. Either way, I profit. So how exactly does one go about developing this kind of rock solid self-trust, especially after the fallout of narcissistic abuse or worse yet, a lifetime of having been gaslit and scapegoated by a narcissistic family of origin, which, as we know, typically starts in early childhood. So for many of us, this issue of self-trust or a lack thereof has been a lifelong struggle. And therefore, we've been operating from a fundamental place of fear, doubt, insecurity, as well as a colossal lack of self-trust for a very long time. So this is no small issue. So how do we get there? How do we begin to live our lives from a solid foundation of self-trust? Well, to begin with, let's define what it means to trust someone. What exactly is the real meaning of trust? The official definition is to believe that someone is good and honest and will not harm you, or to know that something or someone is safe and reliable. So in lieu of that definition, can you make a decision today hand on heart that says that you are good, honest, safe, and reliable, that you will conduct yourself in a manner that will not bring harm to yourself in any way on any level? If not, no worries, you can get there. You just need the right roadmap and the willingness to follow the steps. But before we dive into that, let's go a little deeper into what it means to embody genuine self-trust. Self-trust fundamentally means operating from a basis of consistently staying true to yourself. At its very core, trusting yourself means to accept radical responsibility for yourself and the quality of your life. And as such, you look after your own needs and safety on every level, meaning emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, physically, and financially. In doing so, you consistently, reliably, and predictably treat yourself with love, acceptance, approval, validation, and compassion. 
rather than strive for perfection, you do your best, you give it your all, whatever it is in the moment, and then accept the outcome as well as yourself, flaws and all. You know deep down that you can survive difficulties and you refuse to give up on yourself. To know that you have your own back, to make the decision that you can in fact rely on yourself to act in your own best interest. Being there for yourself, supportive, loving, kind, and validating of yourself, especially when you need it most. All of this is the foundation of being able to embody self-trust. And the reality is, friends, if we're going to have a healthy relationship with others, we have to have a healthy relationship with ourselves first. And the ability to trust ourselves, and again, to know that we have our own back, to know that we can consistently, reliably, and predictably act in our own best interest, is absolutely foundational to having a healthy relationship with others. And don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean that we behave in a way that does not ever take into consideration what is in the best interest of others. Not at all. It means that we are not in the habit of doing so to our own detriment. We do not abandon ourselves. Neither do we prostitute ourselves for scraps of validation and approval from people who don't have it to give. Instead, we support ourselves. We back ourselves. And most importantly, we protect ourselves. Furthermore, when necessary, we're even willing to go to bat for ourselves, even in the face of tremendous adversity. And thus, we know we can trust ourselves. One of the effects of being enmeshed in a narcissistic or otherwise toxic relationship is our tendency to lose ourselves in the dysfunctional dynamic. We become temporarily disconnected from our true self, our core, the truth of who we are our divine nature and essence. And for that reason, a large part of healing and recovery from these issues involves reconnecting with our core, our authentic self, developing a genuine sense of self-love and self-esteem, and ultimately a solid sense of self-worth and, you guessed it, self-trust. Included in all of that is a standard that we live by, a standard of self-protection and self-preservation as part of our modus operandi, our standard operating procedure, so to speak. Again, not at the expense of others, but in favor of our own comfort, our own well-being, our safety, and in some cases, even our sanity. Now comment below and let me know if you're finding value in this video. Let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in one of my coaching programs, there's a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. This is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself and your healing and recovery journey. If you want the pain to stop, you want to find a way out of the fog, confusion, self-doubt, fear, and anxiety brought on by having been exposed to empathy-impaired emotional manipulators who feel entitled to hurt you, and worse yet, blame you for the hurt they cause. If that's you, the link is in the comments below. So how do you know you're suffering from a lack of self-trust? Well, to begin with, you're forever second-guessing yourself which leads to perpetually having a difficult time making decisions. Even the simplest of decisions can be a challenge. You often find yourself stuck, stuck in analysis paralysis, which leads to full-blown decision paralysis. And this boils down to not being able to trust how we're going to treat ourselves regardless of the outcome. If things don't go the way we want them to or think they should, we can't trust ourselves to be supportive and kind to ourselves no matter what. So we're afraid to make the decision and instead we stay stuck until some external force comes along and either makes the decision for us or forces us to make the decision in haste, which rarely, if ever, works out in our favor. And the truth is, that's the least of it. If this resonates with you, I don't have to tell you the heavy price you pay for living your life from a fundamental lack of self-trust. You know full well what this is costing you. So what's the solution? How do you start to develop a genuine sense of self-trust? Where do you even begin? Well, I believe a good place to start is to begin by acknowledging your own needs. 
A big part of the reason we don't trust ourselves is we don't acknowledge and therefore honor our own wants and needs. Instead, it's more likely that you're in the habit of prioritizing the wants and needs of others over your own, and often to your own detriment. You default to others and their wants and needs, and as a result, you end up losing yourself and any sense of self-trust you might otherwise have. So begin by acknowledging your own wants and needs and then start honoring them. One want, one need, one desire, one day at a time. And do so in the spirit of deciding I am trustworthy. I can trust myself. From there, give yourself permission to feel your feelings, all of them, whatever they are. Feelings are not facts, but if you feel it, it's true for you, period. If you don't allow yourself to feel and fully process whatever it is you're feeling, it's going to be very difficult for you to learn to trust yourself. Worse yet, if you're in the habit of judging and criticizing yourself for having your feelings, if you won't allow yourself to be with and again feel your feelings, how on earth can you stand in your truth, honoring your experiences, past as well as present, and then develop the self-trust necessary to know that you can successfully navigate your way in and out of whatever dynamic you find yourself in. If you want to heal it, be free of it for real. You're going to have to feel it. And I promise you, you can trust yourself to survive feeling the full brunt of your feelings. You're stronger and more resilient than you give yourself credit for. In addition, make a conscious decision to stop second-guessing yourself. It really can be this simple. Just make the decision to trust yourself and watch what happens. Again, a big part of developing self-trust is as simple as deciding that you are trustworthy, that you will not let yourself down, and then follow through on that decision and act like the trustworthy person that you actually are. Decide that you can trust yourself to have your back to act in your own best interest and get it right, even if at times it may look like you've not gotten it right at all. Remember, either way, you profit, right? So decide and start developing the muscle of self-trust. The problem is when you constantly doubt and second-guess yourself, when you waffle back and forth, when you make a decision and go back on it, you do something and then doubt what you've done, you're doing so because you haven't made some fundamental decisions first. In other words, you have yet to establish the new standard for yourself and how you now get to do life. Decisions like, I am trustworthy. I can trust myself. I can trust myself to make the right decision. I do trust myself to make the right decision, to get it right, to have my back. I can trust myself to not abandon myself and instead to act in my own best interest no matter who likes it or doesn't like it. I can trust myself to love myself and be kind to myself no matter what the outcome backlash or fallout is. If you don't start with those fundamental decisions, then naturally you're going to second guess yourself because frankly, you don't know how you're going to treat yourself if things don't turn out exactly how you want them to. However, when you make a decision to believe in your inherent worth and commit to doing whatever healing and recovery work you need to do to own and embody your full worth and value, doubting our inherent worth is not something that fixes itself by accident, friends. We actually have to roll up our sleeves and do some things in order to not only heal, but also shift our identity on a subconscious level so we can embody a more self-reliant, self-trusting, and genuinely self-confident version of ourselves. The you you've always been deep down inside at your core, your true divine essence. The truth is, the only thing that makes you worthy is the fact that you were born. You're here. There is no way to prove your worth, and there's no way to prove you're not worthy. You just are because you are, period. If your habit or pattern is to perpetually discount your own value, your own worth, if you never let yourself acknowledge your value and inherent worth, it's gonna be really, really hard to trust someone, anyone, including yourself, when they, AKA you, don't acknowledge the value that you carry, the worth that you have and bring to the table, the truth of who you are. 
When you beat yourself up for your mistakes and never let yourself off the hook, never forgive yourself, I'm not talking about giving yourself a pass when you drop the ball or show up as your worst self. Of course, it's important to take our own inventory and learn from our shortcomings, our failures, our bad days and transgressions so we can grow, evolve and do better next time. That's all of us friends. Welcome to the human race on planet Earth. But it's our inability to be gentle, kind and loving with ourselves while we do that, while we take our own inventory from a place of being rigorously honest with ourselves. That shit cripples us in terms of our ability to trust ourselves. It's okay to be disappointed when you make a mistake. It's okay to not feel great when you screw up. But sitting in self-loathing and beating yourself up, well, needless to say, it's going to be very, very hard to trust yourself when that's how you treat yourself. And the only way to knock it off is to knock it off. Stop doing that to yourself immediately. But don't stop there. You also want to make a commitment to stomp downplaying your gifts, talents, abilities, and accomplishments, your real successes. This comes back to owning your value and worth. Take a second to realize, own, and acknowledge what you've done, all that you've overcome, and who you've become in the process of all you've been through, all you've survived. Stop being so hard on yourself and give yourself some kudos. And while you're at it, Stop breaking promises to yourself. Often we have no problem breaking promises to ourselves while we would never break a promise we've made to someone else. When you do life this way, you're not saying it's not that important. What you're saying is I'm not that important. You want to trust yourself? Stop treating yourself like some second class citizen in your own life. Put yourself at the top of your totem pole, not only for your own good, but for the good of those around you. No one likes a martyr, friends, except of course a narcissistic perpetrator, and frankly, who cares what they like? This conversation is about you. It's your time now. And while you're at it, start valuing your own opinion. Know that your opinion of yourself is the only one that matters. When you believe that other people's opinion of you is more important than your own, believing that other people's thoughts, opinions, judgments of us are more important than what we know to be true about who we are, we are way off track. And when we are way off track, intuitively we know we can't trust ourselves. So start now, start today. Your opinion of you is the only opinion that matters. And if you don't yet hold yourself in high esteem, then start doing the work. You'll be amazed at just how quickly you can get there. And I promise you, you're worth the effort. And with that, I'm gonna call it a wrap. But don't stop now. I have well over 100 more videos right here on YouTube for you to watch to help you better understand the detrimental effects of narcissistic abuse. And more importantly, learn what you need to do now to heal from the abuse so you can start living your best life in peace, confidence, freedom, and abundance. And if you want to go deeper with me, go to TammyMCoaching.com and learn about my unique tried and true process garnered over decades of experience and learn how you can become my client.